You asked me what one of the most interesting stories on the Superstition Mountains is. Well, I can kind of come back with the fact that probably the most tantalizing and bizarre cases in the history of Superstition Mountain is the story of Adolph Ruth. Uh, Dr. Ruth came here from Washington, D.C. in June of 1931 to search for the Lost Dutchman Mine, or what he thought was the Peralta Mines. He had a map that he acquired from his son, Dr. Irwin Ruth, who worked for the Department of Agriculture, the Animal Husbandry Division, along the Mexican border during the Mexican Revolution. And down in Mexico, he had befriended a Mexican officer, and the family supposedly gave him this group of maps that would guide him to some of the gold mines that the Peralta families had in the American Southwest. A group of these mines was located in Arizona, and another one was located in Southern California. Adolph Ruth and his two sons, Irwin and Earl, made a trip to California in 1919 in search of the rich gold mines that supposedly existed in the Anzio Borrego Desert. And it was here in 1919, in December, that Ruth fell and injured himself seriously. Uh, there are some headlines pertaining to this. Here you can see the headlines, Geologist Falls in Mountains, Breaks Hip, Lies in Agony for Four Days. This appeared in the San Diego Union in December of 1919. All right, Adolph Ruth arrived on the Barclay Ranch June 14, 1931. Uh, he talked to Tex Barclay and asked him about a needle-shaped mountain located in the superstitions. Of course, Tex Barkley, being an old guy and cattleman in the area, immediately knew which mountain he was talking about. And he said, of course, that's Weaver's Needle. And Adolph Ruth asked Barkley, he said, well, could you take me there? He says, I know where a rich gold mine is located near that needle. And Barkley told him, well, this is the worst time of the year to go into the superstitions. It's very hot and there's a lack of moisture. And Ruth insisted that he must go, and Barkley finally gave in and said in a couple three days when he returned from Phoenix he'd be glad to pack him in. While Ruth was impatient and soon after Barkley left he talked two prospector cowboys and hung around the old Barkley ranch into making the trip into the superstitions with him. Uh, these two men took Ruth over into the area of Willow Springs and set up his camp and left him. Well Barkley on his return from Phoenix immediately knew the old man who was aging and had an injured hip would soon be in trouble in the intense heat in the Superstition Mountains and of course the isolation and without any help back there. So he saddled up and rode into Willow Springs looking for Adolph Ruth. He searched the area and could not find the old man and he noticed his camp had not been occupied for some 24 hours. Uh, Barkley was not the only one that had seen old Adolph Ruth in, before he went into the mountain, there was another man that had met him on the trail. And he said that Ruth was really hurting as far as sweating and the heat getting to him. But he finally made it into camp with these two cowboys and they had set him up. Well, the next thing that happened with Ruth not being able to locate old man Ruth, uh, Barkley immediately notified the Maricopa County Sheriff's officers and they began a search for him. And uh, this headline appeared in the Arizona Republic uh, in June of 1931, illustrating that uh, Ruth was missing in the Superstition Mountains. And this began the search for Adolph Ruth, which was to last for over six months. And with his body being finally found, or the skull you might say, by Brownie Holmes and Odds Halseth in 1931 on December the 10th. There was much speculation as to what happened to Ruth. The Arizona Republic, again, uh, had headlines pertaining to this. However, the headlines did not indicate what had happened until the skull was actually found in December of 1931. This headline in the Arizona Republic indicated that Ruth had been murdered deep in the Superstition Mountains. As you look through the many others in the paper, there were other indications as to uh, possibilities of murder. And of course, things like new quiz starts in the root case. This gives you some idea of the type of publicity. More than 167 newspaper articles appeared throughout the United States 
during this period of time pertaining to the Adolf Ruth case, the missing gold map, and many of the other things that was part of his property. A uh, sheriff opens hunt for body, a prospector, appeared in the Gazette on December the 15th, 1931, and this was after the skull was found near the north end of Bluff Springs Mountain. Finally, in January of 1932, Adolph Ruth's body was found in a small tributary of Blacktop Mesa, and here the remains of his body were uncovered. There was the skeletal remains, his pistol, and a thermos jug, but no map to the legendary lost mine in which Ruth was searching for. Uh, one of the other speculations and headlines that appeared, this was on the 19th of December, Ruth murdered for gold map in the Superstition Mountains of Arizona. This appeared in many newspapers in some content or some order like this. Uh, most of the reference was murdered and also a gold map. When Brownie Holmes found the skull under a tree, actually, uh, Brownie doesn't take uh, credit for it. It was really a bloodhound that was with him named Music that had smelled the skull. Some of the most tantalizing, mysterious things occurred at this point. The skull, when recovered on December the 10th, 1931, it had just rained. There was, the skull was still green, uh, parts of flesh were still hanging from it. And immediately these old timers speculated, how could a skull have lasted from June until December of 1931 and still have any meat left on it? Most of the meat would have been erode, um, eaten away by maggots or something like that. Anyway, uh, the skull was taken, instead of out of the mountains at this time, the skull wasn't taken out of the mountains at this time. It was hauled off over to Charlie Boy Camp, where Odds Hell said, uh, Newcomer and uh, Brownie Holmes and Richie Lewis made camp for the night. There's even a rumor that floats around that they hung the skull up in one of the large sycamore trees on a wire to prevent animals getting to it in the night while they slept. And as the skull dangled around in the tree, uh, some of the uh, rumors that spread from this story was that one of the guys woke up in the night and seen the skull and it frightened him. And this sort of started a little tale about uh, Ruth's skull floating around the superstitions. It also led to the tale that Ruth was murdered in the Barge Canyon and not where his body was found. Here's where the mystery really begins. Was Ruth murdered or did he die uh, from accidental causes or natural causes or something like this? There's a lot of reports. Things that really you have to speculate on. Uh, the body was found on December 10th and it was taken to Phoenix around December the 12th. Uh, it was looked at and examined by Odds House said there was no uh, autopsy performed on the skull itself. And then the skull was sent immediately to Washington, D.C. to a man by the name of Dr. Alex Herlika. Herlika was one of the foremost anthropologists in the United States and a specialist in gunshot wounds. And here's a telegram that was returned to uh, Hal said by Herlika stating that the skull was definitely that of an aged white man. Uh, this is kind of interesting in the fact that this skull had to travel all the way from Phoenix, Arizona to Washington, D.C. This required at least five days to do. So if the skull was out and in Phoenix by the 12th, put on a train by the 13th, Herlika must have received the skull by the 15th or the 16th, maybe the 17th even, and was able yet to get a message back to Odds House set confirming this skull to be that of an aged white man. This is one interesting clue, but probably the most interesting thing, Arizona authorities did not claim that Ruth died of nothing more than natural causes. And they said the holes that were in the skull were the results of mountain hogs or javelinas chewing on it and dragging it around the mountains. Well, now we know better than that because we can look at some of the information that had been recovered in recent years from the National Archives. In one report here, I'd like to read from. It says, I am informed that since the finding of this skull, a headless skeleton somewhat scattered over the ground has been discovered about three-fourths of a mile from where the skull was found 
and that the skeleton has been identified as that of Adolf Root by the presence of his watch, papers, and other personal belongings. The condition of the skull indicated that death occurred not more than a few months ago. My examination disclosed that all features of this skull closely corresponded with the aforementioned photographs vary in view of the aforementioned close correspondence. Indicates that this skull is extremely unlikely not to be that of Adolf Root. A consideration of all the evidence presented to me, which is related in detail above, discloses with reasonable certainty that the aforementioned skull is that of Adolf Root. Furthermore, it is in my opinion, as stated above, that Adolf Root very probably met his death by means of a shot from a high-powered gun. Uh, it's kind of interesting in this report, and this is a, an official report that Dr. Arlika filed. And this here happens to be a Xerox copy of it. So really, he is the only official that did any type of a autopsy on any of the remains of uh, Adolf Root. There's another item in here that is quite interesting, too. My examination pos positively determined that it is the skull of H. Whiteman, holes in the skull, one about two inches in diameter, on the left side of the somewhat downwardly to the left. I have examined such wounds before and have examined many skulls with bullet holes found on battlefields. I hold a degree as a doctor of medicine and have been engaged in anthropological work for many years. At present, I am curator of the physical anthropological department at the National Museum in Washington, D.C. And so anyway, I think this gives enough documentation and authenticity to the type of person that examined uh, Ruth's skull. So the mystery becomes even deeper when we find out and we can conclude the fact that Ruth may have been murdered and that he did not die of natural causes and the superstitions. Now, this would not really be important if it had happened a decade before or a decade after. Nobody would have probably paid any attention to it. But it just happened to happen in 1931, and this was at the height of the Depression. And it was during this Depression that Adolf Ruth's death caused such a sensation in the nation. Uh, people were tired of reading about the bread lines. They were tired of the news of the Depression. And when the headlines came out in 1931 and of January 1932, immediately, People grasp onto this. Gold Prospector dies in the Superstition Mountains. He was murdered for his map. And these type of headlines created a whole new perspective in adventure. And that there was what was providing the need for the people to look for some hope. Here they were wondering where the next meal would come from. And from this, many people ventured towards Arizona to search for the lost gold of Superstition Mountains. And really, to this day, Adolf Ruth's death still remains a mystery.